Hey all, Amanda here with your full recap of American Ninja Warrior Season 15, Episode 4, Round 5. This episode felt extremely rushed as there was barely an opener before the first athlete hit the course. I'm not sure I like these episodes only being an hour long. It seems like I'm just getting into the action, and then we hit the runoffs, and it's over. And I have a feeling the head-to-head semifinals are going to feel even faster. We'll see. As for the action this episode, the six obstacles for round five included the pole vault, grease lightning, domino effect, the getaway, ring the bells, and the warped wall. Again, this season, athletes must hit a buzzer in under a minute 20 seconds to earn their shot at scaling the 18 and a half foot mega wall. If successful, they'll win $10,000. As for the competition itself, saving the best run of the night for last, it's no surprise that Caden Lubsack took first place on the leaderboards with a near-perfect run. He was also the only athlete this round to earn a shot at the Mega Wall. I thought he was just being humble when he sheepishly said that he would try, but unfortunately, he was considerably too short on his attempt and missed out on the 10k. I can see Caden reaching Mount Midoriyama again this season, hopefully with different results. And in yet another odd decision, rookie Barry Boyd had his run digested, even though he took the second fastest time of the night, hitting his first buzzer at a time of 142.21. Hopefully, he can make it to the finals so we can see one of his runs in full. Another teen returning for his third season, Max Feinberg landed in third place, though his run was digested. He was able to hit a buzzer in 146.60 and runs for his mother, who is a breast cancer survivor. Scott Behrens is now one of several ninja parents in the community, being a competitor himself and father of three, two of which have already competed in the juniors. He's also the uncle of fellow competitor Chris Behrens. Though most of his previous runs had been cut, he was able to reach the finals his rookie year on season 11. He seemed to be doing better and better as he made it through the course and was the last athlete to hit a buzzer this round with a time of 2.03.93 and if this impressive run wasn't fun enough to watch, you have to check out his kids cheering on the sidelines. I so hope his little girl competes one day. These kids were so sweet and an absolute joy to see. Returning for his eighth season, one of my favorite competitors, Tyler Yamauchi had his run digested, and though he's previously hit 11 buzzers throughout his career, after his third attempt at the warped wall, he was unable to complete the course. He even had his fingers on the ledge on his last attempt. At least he advances to the semifinals. Jackson Twait took sixth place and had a pretty good shot at hitting a buzzer, but I think he had his eye on the time as he started picking up speed after domino effect and only grabbed the money bag with one hand at the end of getaway. His rushing started to make him sloppy, as he jumped from the first to the second bell in one move, and started getting turned around. Rather than take a moment to reset, he made his move, and ended up missing the last handle, smashing his face on the landing pad. Next on the leaderboard is Scott's oldest son, and hype guy, Ben Behrens. Unfortunately, his run was digested, although the crowd was behind him the whole way. He second-guessed his last lachet on Ring the Bells, which caused his hands to slip, sending him into the water below. However, he is heading to the semifinals with his dad. Derek Pervoni was next to have his run digested, where he landed on his butt after domino effect and missed the last handle on Ring the Bells. He took eighth place on the leaderboards. Chris Deganchi also had his run digested, where he came close to completing the course, but he too missed the last handle on Ring the Bells. Fiancé Jesse Lebrecht was watching from the big screen at home, but nothing was said about why she was not there. Usually, Matt or Akbar will say if a competitor is out this season, or a notation will appear stating when that athlete would run. None of this happened, so I don't know if Lex will be competing this year. Apparently, she did receive a call to compete, so we'll have to wait and see. Cade Perkins made his impressive debut tonight, 
and after learning of his comeback from paralysis at age 10, I think the entire crowd was behind him. He struggled to ascend the pole, and had a close call landing his dismount from Grease Lightning, but then sailed across domino effect. Unfortunately, Cade missed the last handle on Ring the Bells, but did take 10th spot, and is heading to the semifinals. Rookie J1 Turner took his time through the first three obstacles, and caught the money bag low on getaway, but was able to recover. He made it all the way to the end of Ring the Bells, but like so many others before him, missed the last handle and hit the water. J1 took 11th spot on the leaderboards. Drew Marinelli had his run digested, where he missed hooking the ring on getaway, putting him in 12th position and sending him to the runoffs. And 8-year veteran James Wilson also had his run digested. He had a close call landing his dismount after Grease Lightning, but he too missed hooking the ring on getaway, landing him in 13th place and sending him to the runoffs. The four obstacles that made this round's runoffs included Home Run, Spring Forward, Beehive, and Hopscotch. Drew took an early lead after James stumbled crossing Home Run, and kept that lead up to Beehive. Just as James started the Beehive, Drew made his final lache, but missed, and hit the water. All James had to do was complete Beehive to advance, and almost blew it when he caught the final honeycomb with one hand, but was able to recover and make the dismount. James went on to try for a buzzer, but fell on hopscotch. James will advance to the semifinals. As for the women... A phenom from the juniors, Taylor Green is an athlete her fellow veteran ninjas have been waiting for for years. Taylor seemed to be having a ton of fun on the course, and only got slightly hung up trying to rotate the wheel on getaway. At 15 years old, and on her debut run, Taylor became the first female to hit a buzzer this season, with a time of 2.28.40. Next on the leaderboards is 18-year-old Maggie Owen, training partner of Jesse Lebrecht and Krista Ganji. Maggie had to scramble to save herself on pole vault and got hung up on the rotation of the wheel on getaway, but she too almost completed the course, but just missed the last handle on Ring the Bells. And in third place is Riley Porter, who had her entire run cut from the show. She too is 15 years old and apparently fell on Grease Lightning. The women who took fourth and fifth place respectively both had their runs cut and apparently both went out on Grease Lightning. Ellie Tippett's Wooten is a physician's assistant and took fourth place, and Kendall McKenzie is a wedding photographer and took fifth place. They faced off in the runoffs, where Ellie took an early lead on home run, but Kendall quickly caught up and they matched move for move through spring forward. Ellie again took a slight lead after the dismount, but Kendall rushed past her and started beehive first, but then missed the last catch sending her to the water below. Ellie completed Beehive and went on to hit a buzzer, securing her spot in the semifinals. Other competitors that ran but did not advance include Nate Person, who had his run digested, where his hand slipped off the money bag on getaway. And in a heartbreaking run, one of my favorite ninjas, Donovan Matoyer, promised to do a 360 spin up the mega wall as he was running for time. Although it would have been cool to see, I thought he was stupid for risking a shot at 10k, but none of that mattered, as he stunningly got tripped off crossing domino effect, where his feet hit the water, ending his season. Yet another example of why I always say, in this show, anything can and will happen. Brian Parache had his run digested, where he just survived pole vault, only to bounce from the landing, after dismounting Grease Lightning. Brian Messler, Angela Fuller, and Sandy Sanders all had their runs digested, where all three of them hit the water, trying to complete the pole vault. It looks like five other men and one other woman ran, but had their runs completely cut from airing. I think there should be three more qualifying rounds, including an all-military episode, before we head into the semifinals, but with this show, you never know. So make sure not to miss a single episode of American Ninja Warrior Season 15 
every Monday this summer, only on NBC, with episodes streaming on Peacock the next day. Then remember to come back here for your full recap and theories shortly after, and of course, feel free to play along by commenting on who you hope will take it all this year, and until next time, enjoy the show!